All right, Phil, come here. So you're, now you're doing the Sean Deep thing. You're just going to multi-table. I mean, yeah, I've only multi-tabled like three times, and I won a bracelet or two doing it. So. And you're not so playing the playing. online tournaments. I think that's pretty hard for me. You know, like I, I yeah. like to focus on people. It's a grind. It's a grind. Speaking of grind, this is where we're at right here. A grind. Hey, I work hard every motherfucking day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. Feeling fresh as a daisy on day, whatever. Um, before, I'm going to probably do some pancakes right now. This time I won't burn them. I don't know how the hell that happened. I just think I was like busy with you guys. This I had the heat on high. Turned it down to medium, but it was already too high. David Williams was a vlog watcher mentioned, but he saw the pan. He knows like, bro, that's the, they're going to burn fast. That's why I gave David the toughest basket. You're an idiot. <laughs> idiot. <sighs> no, I mean, this idiot doesn't even get protein and then I get this and he <laughs> Oh, no, it's, it's just, it's a joke. Eh, it's whatever. This one, these ones won't burn, they'll be perfect. But before we get the day started, I wanted to, I wanted to give you guys a little, oh, look at that, that's my, that's my face cream. That's Le Domain. That's the Brad Pitt shit. People ask me, how do you keep your face so nice? Like, look at this, you don't leave it on here like that or go like that like somebody else did in the last vlog. I don't know, but you know, just say it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so the cream, Le Domain, it's expensive. Very expensive shit, but it works. Okay. Um, so yesterday's vlog, here's a little bit of the process, how it works. You know, I shoot video all day, uh, shoot video at the games and stuff like that. And then, you know, send it to Christian or it comes, goes to an iCloud. Christian will look at it, you know, I'll give him some pointers on what I want, you know, add this, add that, like the John Taffer thing, you know, like put in a little bar rescue clip and stuff. So I do that. And then typically what we do is, you know, when there's a player or somebody we're, we're referencing, you know, we put a little bubble, boom, you know, boom, like that. And you see the person's name and you see their picture. Okay. So then what happens is we send it to Korea, okay? And there's a good solid team of guys in Korea who will edit the vlog, have it out for you early in the morning. I mentioned Korea because Brian Kim, well, that's Korean and he a Korean. But if you look closely at that picture, that ain't Brian Kim. <laughs> he said that to me this morning. So I watched the vlog and I noticed that they put just another random Asian dude in there. Not even me. That wasn't even like, you can't even come at me for that, right? That was Koreans mis mis misreading another Korean. Not, nothing to do with me, for the record. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's get the day started. All right, time for a drive-in video. Let's talk a little dealer's choice. I've been talking about dealer's choice a lot lately because it has become my favorite format. Um, at PGT, I came in third or fourth or something and I had some good runs in it last year. Yeah, I don't know. I like the, I like the format. Um, there's so much to it. It's not simply just playing poker. There's 20 different games. People can choose whatever the hell they want. So you have to be, you know, decent at all the games, right? And the other strategy is finding out what do my opponents play poorly? What gives me the best, biggest advantage? Your best game not might not be the best game to call if you're at a table with others who have the same best game. It's one of the, like I said before, Adam Friedman, one of his skill sets is figuring that out. So for me, one of the things I look for when I'm trying to figure out what is the best game for me in a tournament format, it's a game where my opponents will lay down to me. Remember, they will not fight back. They will not fight. They were just, they're just like hoping to get through the, the round, right? So that game generally for me in most tables in this mix is going to be Pot Limit Omaha. Pot Limit Omaha is a scary game for a lot of players that like play Limit. I'm not afraid. I fight. I fight hard in the PLO pots. It's also an opportunity to like really win big pots. Like, you know, if your goal is to win the tournament, you know, you want to build a stack. PLO is a game you can do that in. It's like stud high low regular. Okay, cool. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a low very. But like, how are you gonna? If you played only stud high low regular, where are you gonna get your chips from? You can't. It's hard to scoop people. Now, if I'm short, like super short, that's the game. Stud high low regular. The question is, what do we call now? Considering we have six big bets, which is okay. Like again, I've talked about limit hold limit uh, events. Six big bets is fine. I don't even know what it would be like in let's see two and so the blinds are two and four, so that would be 10, I don't know, I have like 13, in, in the big bets, I have like 13, 14 bets or some big, big bets, or big blinds. So the question is, I don't know that, I don't think PLO is probably the right choice in my stack depth, you know, I, I wanna play something lower variant, so the question is really probably gonna be between stud high, low, regular, which is, you know, very like low variance, or 
you know, my favorite game, my best game from growing up, stud eight or better. I think with my stack size, that's gonna be my primary choice as of now, but it's gonna depend. We're gonna take a look at the table. And if the table's a bunch of guys who are not gonna three bet aces in PLO because they're too scared to get it in, uh, we might just you know, live by the sword, die by the sword, and go hoard. Oh, check out the new shirt today, speaking of. So look at that, you know, we got the high stakes poker. Um, I like this shirt, it fits nice. And you know, you got the Mount Rushmore, you got Doyle, of course. And they put me on there with Ivy and uh, Count Leaf. Kinda cute. Anyways, here we go, let's play some poker. Oh, while we roll into the World Series of Poker today, I forgot. There's one other thing I want to let you guys in on, just so you know what's going on. My man Christian, very smart. He figured some stuff out. So we love our theme song when we come in. It's that logic. I work hard every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work hard. I work hard. You know, so we got that. Um, and we pay royalties on that because that is a logic song. Uh, on the weekends, though, if we were to post a video, okay, and use that song, so on the weekends it takes like three days for them to okay it. So instead, we give you a little something, something that's royalty free. That way we can roll out the vlogs. But if you like that song and you dig it, five nights a week or five days a week, you'll hear that one. Two days you'll hear the other one. I like both, they're cool, they're catchy. That's the goal, every year we come up with something catchy that gets stuck in your head, you know what I mean? I will pawn, I will pawn every day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks for me. We're entering the tournament over here. Harrison, I got a message for you from the guys. I got a message for you. What's that? It was one of these. <laughs> one of these. I don't have my big hands with me. Are you playing this I'm thing? In, yeah. Look at that. Back in action. <laughs> How are your chips? Wait, you're, you got leaner. I'm show them a flex. Show them a flex. The people at home. Flex. Come on. Show them a flex one time for the people. Oh, there's a little something there. Yeah, you're doing good. <laughs> for the vlog. For the vlog. All right. Good luck, gents. What are you calling when you when it's your turn? What's that? What game you calling when it's your turn? Uh, well, I just played red, so of course I'm gonna do uh, Omaha. I'm trying to get all in, yeah. Well, let's go. F yeah. LFG. How are your chips? I'm I just I basically bought in late last night, so I, I got 50k. Well, have you last one? No, last shorter. <laughs> all right, so far not the start we were looking for. That's the stack. That's 5k. That's uh, 500. Played one hand against this gentleman right here. This is the only hand I played. Played one hand. He limped the small blind. I checked back in the big blind, big O, with Ace three three, King eight, and I have King high clubs. Flop is ace, six, three with two clubs with the ace there. I got enough flush draw, I got a set. I don't know, I got an ace. He bets, I call. Turns a six, now it's decision time. He's only got 24K, there's 14 in the pot. I could do one of two things. I can check it back and try to save 10K or save a little bit because he can't bet the pot. Or I can try to push him off a low, right? So I felt like it made a little more sense because I mean, what? If you have a full, you have a full. I do have a goofy low, low draw and just in case he has no low card. But uh, that was the dilemma. So I bet he raised all of them and he had aces and a little So Yeah, that was the only decision and I'm okay with it. I think it's fine. Like he's gonna fold a lot of bad lows and we wanna take that half of the pot. We're very unlikely to be for high. I have an ace blocker, I have three three. Don't have a six, but. Yeah. Same decision for me, whether check raising the tournament. Yeah, good job. Okay, so look, hand breakdown from both of us. The guy who beat me, go GG poker. Obrigado. <laughs> okay, I'm all in for my one little chip. It is single draw. This is our hand right here. So we say no cards, please. Oh, no that's cards. not good news. It's, I'm taking so, two. So he's taking two. This is why we stayed, okay? We don't have a very good hand, but we're not going to draw to a jack. We're going to hold the queen, and we're going to see. He needs to catch two beauties. You want to go one at a time? Or whatever, yeah, whatever you want. Right. Let's see. First one is gold for you. Oh, sweet. Okay. Back in action. Let's go. That's a that's a pat in this spot. Everybody fold the small blind. You stay pat with this. I, you don't draw two to that. You stay pat. Hope he's got garbage, which he did. Moving on. All right. I We're have, in trouble. I already have a big shit hand. Oh, wow. You have a wheel draw. I, I have dust. aces up. I have completed, I have completed dust. You have, he has dust, yeah. King, you have flush. Diamond. Right. There it is. Yeah, you made it both, huh? Yeah. Good for you, Ophir. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. He's gonna take all my money. He's got the deuce three, he's got the flush, he's got the money. Take it. All right, on to the next one. Okay, so we take a look at the trusty laptop. That's, I'm not old school. I like to look at, you know, the laptop. I, I don't like looking at small things when I'm looking at my schedule. So, we figured out the plan. There is a $600 no limit deep stack. That's not gonna be it. We're not doing that one. There is, that started at two o'clock, it is now 2.13. So it's very deep, 250 big blinds or something like that. Just starting, it is a freeze out, $5,000 no limit hold'em. Now, 
normally in these events, I would like, you know, relax a little bit, show up late, you know, excessively late or whatever um, for the smaller ones. But this one makes sense to jump in there now. And I'll tell you, well, make a coffee, relax, maybe at three o'clock. Because what we'd like to do is we like to play that bullet. If things don't go well, for example, in the 5K and we bust, we have two online events that we can play from the comfort of our own couch. And the value of that over a seven week series cannot be underestimated. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, and then like maybe I'll have Patty bring the puppies over. Uh, and, you know, say for example, if we were to bust, like I said, we'd have all day tomorrow because there's game two tomorrow, which would mean a late reg and another hockey game. Um, so yeah, I think that's the play. I think the play is to jump in pretty quick. We're gonna play well. I'm very happy with how I'm playing. You know, like I said, I made some mistakes in the first. I didn't, I don't think I made any mistakes here. I had one interesting, somewhat interesting decision that could have cost me in tournament. And this one's interesting. I have 9K total. The blinds are one and two. So it's like nothing. The guy raises to four, he min raises. I'm in a small blind. I have ace, deuce, five, eight, queen, and big O. Okay, which is a pretty good hand. And I don't have the great greatest suits. I've got three clubs, but on my stack, I'm playing it. The question is, do we call right? Save ourselves a 5k chip? Or do we re-raise to get the big blind out, right? So this is the dilemma. Do I want to play this three-handed? Um, or is there more value in getting the hand heads up against my opponent? The thing about, you know, when I do make the play to, to try to get the big blind out, I'm, I'm invested now, right? But if the flop comes like really bad for us, let's say a king-king-10 flop or something like that, we can just fold, you know, or, or a lot of spots. So I like it. I think it was good. We flopped aces up. He had a straight draw and he hit flush back door. So, all right, we're gonna, it's 2.15 now. I'm gonna make the coffee and we'll probably jump in there by about 3 p.m. Okay, very short time chilling, relaxing, not even sleeping. It's 3.04, we had our coffee, time to go. We'll be there for, there are 40 minute levels on day one. So we're gonna be there for the start of level three, which is 125 big blinds, which is plenty. And we're not, we're playing great. Like I said, I'm not going in there with the, like, oh my God, if I bust here or double, I can uh, go home and play online, right? That is the backup plan. Plan A, and we've been really good about this so far, is uh, play it hard, you know? Play it, play it correctly. We're not, there won't be any spewing. I'm thinking very deeply. Um, I usually play shot clock tournaments and there's no shot clocks in these things. So I'm giving myself the opportunity, like when it's a close spot, like that PLO hand from yesterday, to really think through. And I have been, and it's been, uh, Going well, like I said, I made a couple mistakes because I didn't think long enough, um, but we're only at four. The oops -a meters at four, I think. Nothing on the oops -a meter from yesterday, nothing today. No limit hold them, here we go. All right, off the break we go. We got a hand breakdown with this gentleman right here. I'm gonna tell you about. Uh, no limit hold them, we got 65,000, start with 50 lines will be three and five hundred doing good we're not even going to bring the laptop out yet that uh i think we usually like i said with the online we, we register about an hour out give us a chance to build the stack so we'll do that at about seven it's only four now we'll play another couple levels on the next break that's when we grab the uh the laptop because the software can't you can't two table on which is <laughs> 2023 bruh all right okay let's tell you about the hand all right, let's do this hand breakdown so I can get to that. A little snack, a little pizza. All right, blinds, 200, 400. We are on the button, sitting on 65,000, so a lot of chips. Raised to two and a half X, which is 1,000, with the ace queen of clubs. Pretty standard so far. Big line calls. Flop is ace of spades, nine of spades, seven of diamonds. P checks. Uh, I decided to bet 1,000, as I did when I raised. He makes it 3,600. We don't love that on this board. We just don't love it. You beat by a lot of hands, sets, aces up, and then the draws are usually going to have a lot of equity. Well, of course, any of his random bluffs were fine, but his random bluffs, there's very few bluffs here that are going to be check raises that are zero equity bluffs. You're not going to see like king four check raise here. You're going to see maybe 10 jack, you know, eight, five, stuff like that. Anyway, we of course call. The turn is an eight of hearts. Now we get 7,000, okay? It's a large bet, large sizing. The eight fills in some of the bluffs, whether it was 10-6 suited, 10-jack, makes some additional two pair of hands. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, first, is he bluffing? I don't think so. If he's not, we don't have a lot of outs. Here's the thing, if he is bluffing, he's gonna have a lot of outs anyway. So even if we called correctly and he had like a 10 high flush draw, he has tons of outs. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. 
So we make the fold. Get out of the way. He made it pretty obvious or pretty clear later that, you know, it was a good fold. He said I was drawing dead on the flop, whatever. So we're playing good. Um, yeah, still got 65, as I said. And uh, feeling comfortable. It's a little easier playing the smaller tournaments than it is playing the high rollers in terms of some stuff. And um, we're going to take advantage of it. For days and days, but today she ain't got to do her right alone. All right, off the break we go. Sitting on about 82,000. Hit a wall in terms of fatigue there. So I got a nice massage from Crystal, Ladies aka Rotation. And uh, we're gonna do a third coffee. It's a rarity, but feel it tonight because we got the onlines to play as well. So we need a little bit of mental energy. You like hand breakdowns? We got a couple more for you. Okie dokie, people. We got lots to do here. We gotta get the laptop set up. We gotta get the coffee going. We gotta get the hand breakdowns in. Let's do a couple, okay? I like the way that I'm thinking. I like the way that I'm playing. Um, taking my time. It's really different without a shot clock. I, can, I don't have to feel the stress of the time. Anyway, let's talk about the hand. Lines are 300, 500. Under the gun player raises to 1200. Cut off calls. We decide to defend the big blind with the queen deuce of hearts. 700 more. Call. Flop is 10, 10 deuce. Spade, club, heart. Check, check, check. Turn is the eight of hearts. So now I've got a pair of deuces, a queen high flush draw and you know, so I have some of a best hand and also, you know, a good draw. I bet 2,100. Both players call. Boom, boom. I didn't expect that. River is the five of hearts now. I make the flush. So the question is, how much to bet? Or do we bet? Or do we even bet at all? Like, who two people called this turn? A guy raised into the gun? Looks like a spy, you know, a dicey situation here. I don't think anyone has 8-8 eight, because eight, I don't think they check flop either of them with 8-8. Eight, eight. I think that bets. So 10-8 maybe. Is a, is a possibility for flops, but really it's just like flush or nothing. And I decide to just check, see what happens, you know? Now, the under the gun raiser, that's 8,000. Other player folds and it's up to me. So here's the problem. Um, now the question is this. So like, obviously I lose to ace high flushes and king high flushes. And there's more of those from under the gun than there are not. So what other flushes are there? There's like jack nine of hearts, six, seven of hearts. Essentially, that's pretty much the other flush. So if he's value betting, we're pretty dead, right? He's probably going to have us beat because you can also factor in the full houses. So the question is then, you know, what are his bluffs? What is he bluffing with? And, oh, before I get to that, it's like, here, you know, yeah, well, I'll get to this first. What are his bluffs? What is he bluffing with? There's not a lot of them. So essentially what we have is a bluff catcher that beats some value bets. Like maybe he has ace 10 with the ace of hearts. We beat that. That's like pretty thin as played. Um, make a long story short, I thought for a very long time with the queen high flush, I was just, I was so convinced that he had the ace high flush. I was just so sure of it, but I don't know anything about the player. So I elected to make the call. Um, and then like thought about it a little bit more. He showed the ace six of hearts. And then I thought about it a little more after and I was like, oh my God, not for that size. He's never doing that with jack nine of hearts or six, seven of hearts with that size. So there was no value we beat, I don't think. Um, and there's just not enough bluff. So Guess what, gentlemen and ladies? Nobody will think this. Nobody who's going to punch us in a solver is going to agree. But ding, ding, ding. That goes in the oops -a meter If I would have really thought it through, I would have made that lay down with a queen high flush. Check full. We can do it. We can play above the rim. So that's number five on the series. And again, when we're thinking of mistakes, they're going to be min minimal. All right. We got one more for you. Okay. This one's interesting as well. So kind of, kind of similar in a way. The vines are 300, 600. Guy raises to 1,400, cut off calls, small blind calls. So it's three in already. I call with eight of spades, 10 of diamonds. Flop comes, eight, eight, deuce, club, heart, spade. Check, 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 check. Turn is the nine of spades. So I decide to lead for 2,500. The first player who raised calls, and that's important, right? Because when he calls with two players behind him, that's going to be a stronger range, right? If you think about it. So he calls, both folds. The river is the jack of spades. So the flush gets there. I have the eight of spades. I block some stuff. So what do we do here? I do something that I do that I'm not going to explain to you too much because I don't want to tell everybody why I use this or how I use this. I bet 600, the absolute minimum allowed. It's one big bet. Essentially telling him I have showdown value. I also have nuts here too sometimes, right? Uh, go ahead and raise me if you want. It's basically a check that gives him information that I have showdown value. He does raise to 8,500. Okay, hmm, now we're in the tank. We can actually turn this hand into a bluff in some cases because we have an eight. Um, you know, we get called by nine, nine and Jack, Jack, of course. 
Maybe he folds flushes. I don't have a lot of faith. I don't know this guy. I don't know if he's going to fold flushes. So I sort of rule that out. Now the question is, do we pay it off? Do we call? Well, again, what hand is he turning into a bluff? He called turn with two players behind him. Jack of spades hits. Do you really think that he just has like Jack 10 and is going to bluff raise the river with top pair? I think with the Jack, he probably thinks he's good. Maybe I'm doing the 600 with a nine or whatever. So I don't buy it. I don't think he's a bluff. He's got a, he's got enough bluffs here. We fold that one. So head's in the right place, doing the right things. Shit, I'm running out of time. Let's go. All right, made another break. We're out of the first online. We're our last bullet, the second online. Uh, ran into Queens twice with Jacks once and King 10 the other time short. So what am I gonna, what was I gonna tell you? Nothing really that interesting other than uh, we're also short in this one. We got 32K in the 5K. Really just went pretty card dead for an extended period of time. Lost one pot where I raised ace jack of hearts. I got three bit by king queen off. Came uh, ace queen queen. Lost a little bit, not a lot. I check called flop. Check, check turn and I made a min bet on river. And uh, he, he had a queen, so. He was trapping, but then the board ran off straights. Anyways, who cares? Um, so yeah, you know, cruising. I mean, not really, but you know what I'm saying. All right, Phil, come here. So what, so you're a chip leader of the 600, you're gonna play the 5K, you're not playing the online, what's the deal? I think I might play the 6K, the 600 and the 5K because one restarts at 10 a.m. and the other starts at 1 p.m., so that's six half hour levels. So, so you're, now you're doing the Sean Deep thing, you're just gonna do multi-table. I mean, yeah, yeah, I've only multi-tabled like three times and I won a bracelet or two doing it, so. And you're not playing the thing. online tournaments? I think that's pretty hard for me, you know, like I, I yeah. like to focus on people. It's a grind, it's a grind. Speaking of grind, this is where we're at right here. A grind. Okay, we busted. I finally value bet and got shoved on. <laughs> what, it, it was such a, I was really carded. I was like, even the guy, Michael was saying, he's like, you must be insanely card dead. Cause I just was like not playing any hands, but I wasn't folding anything. It's not like I was making big laydowns. Just uh, was dealt out for the most part, not hitting any flop. I mean, I was not even seeing any flops really. And then finally, Andy down to dead. So out of the onlines, out of the 5K, just, I don't enjoy, honestly, like, well, today was a kind of a shitty day. Two online no limits, bleh. Right, then you got the 5K no limit, no shot clock is with like a gazillion players and a kind of slowish structure. Not, no, nah, no, wasn't it. Today wasn't the day. That's all right, we're gonna have days like that. Tomorrow is going to be game two of the hockey. That's gonna be first on the agenda, followed up by playing the 10K stud, um, registering right after the game is over. And uh, yeah, yeah, today sucked. I mean, not like I'm mad or anything. I'm not sad. It was like, just, ugh. Nothing went good. Although I started good, you know, and I was playing well and just got dealt out for the last couple hours. That's all right. There's a lot of series ahead. It's going to happen. Better to happen in a 5K, but man, what a grind. Like, grind. Grind is the word. Grind is the word for what today felt like. So I'm happy to go. I'm happy to be going home now rather than 1 a.m. Good night, peeps.